Hey there, can everybody see me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Marsha Collier. I hope you know who I am. I've been writing about e-commerce and online stuff since the mid-90s. And I wrote the first eBay for Dummies in 1996. I've kind of been online since the 80s, which I really hate to admit. Um, I came from a background in marketing. So when I got online, I, I started to think about what could marketing help me do in the online area, right? I mean, because I saw it as this great opportunity for selling things. And in the mid-90s, I got almost tossed off of AOL for selling. So I decided to take a lot of this and apply everything I knew to online. So I want to thank everyone for participating in the 2012 Thinking Forward live chat series, which is brought to you by my pals at Dymo Indicia. Great people. This is actually the third of six live discussions that will be hosted by me or my fellow e-commerce expert. He's just great, isn't he? John Lawson, Colder Ice. If you missed the first two discussions in the series, uh, they were hosted by John, you can watch the full videos right here on thinkingforward.tumblr.com. Today I'm going to discuss how you can use social media to make money. I've got some incredible social commerce and social media marketing strategies to share with you. So we're going to talk about things you can start implementing right now, immediately, to get your business going. Before we get started, I want to remind you that you can ask questions and leave comments on the social screen stream. I've got it in a window down there, and I'm going to try and notice them as I go along. Um, you'll need to log in with your Facebook, Twitter, Google, or Ustream, like take your pick, account in order to do so. So everyone take a moment to sign in, please, so I can see what you're going to say to me if you have any questions while I'm talking, and, and we'll be ready to go. I see some people signing into the stream, and anybody want to say hi? Yeah? <laughs> Very cool. Good to see everybody on there. All right, so let's talk about social commerce. What does it mean? Right? I mean, we hear the word. We hear the word social media. We hear social commerce. What is it really? Social media social commerce. Think of the word social. Social means people. Dealing with real people. And if you think back how commerce was done in a social way, think about the Avon lady. Did you know that she started, they started the Avon lady during the depression when nobody had money to buy cosmetics, right? They took housewives, armed them with cosmetics, and sent them door to door door-to-door, -door, talking to people, uh, meeting people, building trust with their neighbors. And these women were able to make an income, sell cosmetics, and it was indeed the original kind of social way of doing business, right? And then let's skip forward to internet times when there were chat rooms and internet boards. And people were, you know, they were talking, they were sharing topics, like uh, favorite interests, things like that. Hold on, let me pin my microphone. <laughs> and when they shared interests, it naturally led to people trading goods and selling. So there came Auction Web, which was started by Pierre Omidyar. You might know him as the founder of eBay. But it was Auction Web in the beginning. And it was really driven in the beginning by chat rooms and a social interaction. People would get together, talk about topics. If they were into collecting fine prints, there was a board for fine prints. If they were talking about action figures, they'd be talking about action figures. Um, and this led to them pointing to their sales. But the main thing that engaged people to buy was the social interaction. It's when you make a connection with another person. Get it? Now, eBay, of course, has morphed into a major marketplace. But the Internet is still the same. It's still all about real people. So I thought about what made a really good eBay seller. What, what, you know, what really brought the business to them? And it was social interaction. 
So in 2010, I wrote this book, The Ultimate Online Customer Service Guide, which it was written about customer service, but honestly, it was about social commerce. It's just there wasn't a name for social commerce in those days. Customer service is dealing with people. Selling is what you're going to do when you deal with people. I mean, when you go to a brick and mortar retailer, think about it. Don't you really go to the ones where they welcome you into the store, where they know you, where you have a sales clerk that says, you know, something you really like came in this week. I know you're going to like it, right? Okay, so that's the personal touch. That is the touch point of the social in social commerce. So let's bring it to social media. Social media is people, people talking to people, people engaging people in conversations, people who have like ideas, who just want to meet each other and discuss ideas. I mean, I love in the morning sharing news stories with people, right? Because I get other people's points of view. One of the problems with the internet is we tend to read stories and news articles from the same media. It's not like picking up a Sunday paper like we used to do in the old days and see an article on a topic we didn't know about, right? We choose our media. And the only way you can get a voice out from people choosing their media is by going into a social media platform. Oh, and we're talking Facebook, where you're going to see your friends. Uh, Twitter, which is a much better interaction for reaching people that may not be like you or may not be, you know, their idea of what they want to buy. You might meet people that have new ideas and things. So this is where the commerce portion comes in. Social media is not a broadcast medium. How many times have you, when you watch TV, just flip through the commercials, right? Yeah, commercials aren't fun. And they're not fun during social media interactions. Then you say, how can I sell my items? Well, your commercials need to be kind of couched in between different, different ideas, different points of view, different curated content. You're going to hear a lot about target marketing through content. And all the big brands, the big guys, all they're talking about is how they can do what you can do as a small business because you're a small business. You're a person. You know how to talk about your product. You don't have no offense to all the agencies out there. You know what your business is about. If you're selling vintage lingerie, on an online platform, you know everything about that product. And for you to teach an agency or somebody else about your product, it would probably take you a lifetime to tell everything that you know. So you, as a, sm social, uh, as a small business owner, your face, your personal face on social media is what's going to sell your product, right? So if you have a storefront, let's say on eBay, let's say on your website, which absolutely you definitely should have. Where else can you do this? Well, a lot of people are coming out with, oh, somebody says, I, oh, Sasha and Maida. I always struggle with that, mixing selling and curated content. It's difficult. Um, I like to say only one out of six, and th this was actually proved by Dan Zarella, who's like this brilliant social media scientist who works for HubSpot. You know, one out of six of your comments should be self-referential. Now, whether uh, when I say self-referential, right now we're talking about your business, right? So for your business, one out of six can promote your business. But on Facebook, we all know, bottom line, People love personal stuff, and that's personal about you. Now, you don't have to give away anything. I mean, we all have privacy issues, but honestly, there's not much privacy left on the Internet. I mean, my websites are owned by the Collier Company, and, you know, anybody can find that out, no matter what kind of privacy you buy. So consider it's your personal face on the Internet that's going to sell the product. I'm going to try and bring up a browser window to my Facebook here, and I'm going to show you 
the difference between my personal page and my Facebook page. You can see the buy button on the page is very important because when you're using fan page toolkit if people click the buy button what happens is they are brought to a PayPal window they are not brought back to eBay this is kind of special in the fact that you can no longer sell it through eBay but you're selling through Facebook right so you're paying through Facebook and you can go onto the Facebook uh, store buy the item and when you buy the item you can uh, pay it direct with PayPal now realize that you're no longer paying eBay fees um, what I'd like you to know is that you can go to fan page toolkit I have a bit.ly link for you bit.ly slash fan page toolkit and they have 10 items for free, so you can test it out. You've got 10 items you want to sell. Either they can import from your eBay store, or you can set them up yourself. And that would be bit.ly slash fanpagetoolkit. Uh, they also have a lifetime membership, which is a very long link. And I will post that a little later on Twitter, so you can see how to do that. Unfortunately, I, it's sad I can't show you continual screenshots because it seems the sound goes out and we don't want to do that so fan page toolkit is something you're gonna to want to use now the importance of videos I can't stress how important videos are demonstrate your product and as you saw on my Facebook page I did have videos um, there are some applications www.involver.com slash applications and from Involver you can put videos and go back and check my fan page and join it if you're not a member and check out the videos and what I've done is I've taken videos with an app from Involver and put them front and center on my page so if you have a product that you want to demonstrate People love videos. Keep your video shorter than three minutes. Dear goodness. I mean, how many times have you seen a video, you wanted to learn about something, you click it, and it goes on and on and on. And skip the titles. Nobody wants a commercial. You can overlay your URL. Great idea. But just the videos definitely lead to sales. You'd be surprised how it, it really, really can work for you. Um, so, you know, Facebook, I'll post on my blog, there is like Facebook sizing that you can get from Luna Metrics, which will give you the exact dimensions that you need. All right, so your main interactions, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, we're going to talk about Twitter in a minute and Google Plus. Now Google Plus is a little more unique. I would not necessarily be using that for selling right now. It may be working for some people, but as a small business person you really can't spread yourself too thin, right? You should be using YouTube for product demonstrations, little personal introductions. How about just a video? Here I am. I'm selling. Meet me. I'm a person. My kid helps me with my shipping. Um, I have two people working for me. Let the world know who you are. If you, if you go to the Zappos page, and certainly they've been doing a heck of a job in E and social commerce, um, you're going to find it very interesting that they have pictures you know, of crazy stuff. There's a tattoo on the CEO's head. I mean, it's personal, it's upfront, and it's things that people want to see. Let me see what else. But know that all the time you're building trust. People ask me an awful lot about, let me see if they're okay, people want to know if we have pictures and ads 
that will sell for you on Facebook. Let me just open this and show it to you again. I got, let me see, something like 7,000 views. Now that was just a post which you can promote on your business page by clicking the little promote button. You can only promote it for three days and you can select the amount and Facebook will estimate the amount of people who are going to see your post. I'm going to show it to you again. Right, $6.84 buys you a lot of views. Okay, let me see. Anything else I can show you on Facebook? Okay, now I did a sponsored story once. The difference between a sponsored story and promoting a post. A sponsored story you get to through the ads page. And when you do that, you can select the amount. But what I wanted to pick were people who were using the word eBay in their tweets. And you can refine as closely as what people are talking about currently. Now, this post that I'm going to show you the results of, you're not going to believe it, cost me $50. But again, I had something important to promote. Kind of huge for 50 bucks. Um, really, I mean, you can't get that kind of promotion just simply. So enough about Facebook. Oh, I can see time is just like burning like crazy. Uh, let's talk a little about Twitter. Twitter and things that you... Yes, I am going to uh, not screencast. <laughs> I'm going to show you anything just really briefly. One of the things you need to remember, last thing on Facebook, is that Facebook recently did a study and they found that paid media, those ads, promoted posts, not, not necessarily ads, I'm talking about sponsored stories, because people like stories. I mean, look at our election, right? Whenever one of the presidential candidates wants to connect with people, they want to do it on a social. Here's a story about such and such in some city who needed this. And by making it into a story, making it personal, people connect social. Remember, it all comes back to social. So paid media resulted in fans with greater shopping and buying habits compared to average internet users. For the major retailer, consumers exposed to paid media were 66% more likely to buy something from the website and 45% more likely to buy from a brick and mortar store. I think this stat is kind of epic. Those are pretty big numbers, 66% more likely. So I hope that's convinced you that maybe spending a little money to get your audience together will help. Um, everybody needs to know about mobile. How does your website look during mobile? Now that site is from Google, and you can find that at, at how to go mo h o w t o g o m o dot com and if you go to that site you can input your site's url or your ebay store or whatever you want to see and see what it looks like to people who are using mobile tons and tons of people are interacting and buying now in mobile um twitter when you're dealing with twitter like i said you want to mix your personal, your selling. So let people go and read stories. Now I put my stories together in Google. Re I follow RSS feeds and every morning I go and look at the new stories that I can post and link to on Twitter. Right, so I'm giving people value for following me. So that works really well. Um, on Twitter, know that you need to be in the conversation. We see so many people who are just posting posts. If you post um, continually and you don't talk to somebody, think about it. Nobody cares. 
people may follow you and they may be all robots. And in another one of our webinars, I'll show you how to check if the people that are following you are robots because that doesn't help your trust level. And we're going to get into trust as we talk about Twitter. Because um, American Express did a study, and I don't have the stats right here, but let me see. Edelman, a real big agency, said that the Edelman Trust Barometer states that 77% of people refuse to buy products or services for a from a company they distrusted. It's trust that makes someone act. It's trust that makes someone buy. So if people find your tweet stream valuable, then that's going to work for you. They're going to trust you. You're going to build your trust. If you want to check your current trust level in your online engagement, let me find this. Okay, I'll show you briefly. My trust, as you could see, was at 72.3%. I'm, you know, working my way up in trust. We all have to work on that. You can find that by going to tweetlevel.edelman.com. And you have to ask for permission to use it, but that's no problem. You just click on the link and they will let you know. That's tweetlevel.edelman.com. So let's say you get people to trust you by tweeting valuable information on Twitter. When should you tweet? How do you know when your audience is online? There are a couple tools you can use to do this. Um, let me show you real quick. There's something called Visibly, V-I-S-I-B-L-I. -I. And it's a bar that marks your engagement points on all your posts, and it happens automatically. In my book, I explain how you do this, but it, it really is kind of intuitive, and you can reach me on my Facebook fan page and ask me any questions that, that I can help you with this. Let me show you what it looks like. On that bar, people can click to my profile. They can follow me on Twitter. They can go to my fan page. They can go to my Cooley Bay Tools website. And as you notice, there was even a link to Amazon. So by doing that, visibly get statistics. They know when people are clicking your links. And you can check them on the Visibly platform on your dashboard. They have a free offering where you can monitor one account. And I think for like $19 a month, you can monitor your Facebook business page as well as your Twitter feed. That way you'll know when people are checking you out and when your audience is there. Um, when you are answering people, you know, I always say, look for keywords that people are on Twitter talking about. So let's say you sell um, office supplies. Have a column. It's easy to do in TweetDeck where you search for that word. And every time somebody mentions office supplies or they s mention lingerie or they mention bottled water, um, it will come up. And you can answer them. A lot of the big brands do it. But they don't always do it right. I'm going to show you an interesting tweet that came up, and it shows you how a big brand's agency is handling Twitter, and they search for the keyword. They search for the keyword for their brand, and they look at the interaction. I'm just going to show you right now. Uh, somebody made a little joke about Verizon. Oh, somebody made a little joke, and I made a joke about Verizon, and Verizon answered back. I want you to take a look at how they handled this. Anyone know how to throttle your internet speed? And I kind of joked and I said, Poof, switch to Verizon. And Verizon answers back saying, at Marsha Collier is right, at Brocco, you should make the switch to Verizon. Now, I was joking. I was saying Verizon was slow, but when they monitored the tweet, 
they gave almost an auto reply. They weren't paying attention to what people were saying. That's not the way to tweet. Answer people. When, when they address you, when they address a topic you're interested in, um, actually, I met my boyfriend when I was having problems uh, installing a light fixture in my house. And a bunch of people answered me, and they helped me out. So when I ask the questions, you know, a lot of times I'll ask, like, I see Scott Townsend is with me. Uh, Scott Townsend is someone I often interact with. We ask questions of each other, and other people will chime into the conversation because it's interesting. This is how you get more followers, by announcing your presence on Twitter. Hear me now. Nobody's going to follow you. By doing strings of people's names? No, that's disingenuous. People want to talk to you. They want to know that you're real. That's true. It is, Kevin. <laughs> it really is. So when you're on Twitter, let me see what I can show you. Um, know that using pictures is important. It was funny because I gave a PBS program gosh, in 2005, which interestingly is still valid because this tweet just came up on Twitter yesterday. If you're trying to make a point with your pictures, make your picture so crystal clear that the person knows exactly what it is. It's like when you write a description on an item that you're selling on the web, what I want you to do is take a picture that tells exactly the same story. Um, it makes, that's right, Skip, it brings the human factor into it. Um, if you take a look, I have a listing. If you click qu the Quake Hold listing, on, not on my Facebook, but on eBay, you have a picture of me, I think it was like years ago, demonstrating the product. Pictures. Pictures mean a lot. You can attach pictures to your tweets and get great statistics, right? Visibly, bitly, they all give you great stats. Let me see what else I've got. Oh, um, when you talk about Twitter, get into chats. If any of you are interested, we have a cust serve, customer service, and we do hashtags. Make it short, right? Because short, only 140 characters there. Um, we have hashmark cust serve on Tuesday nights. Get into a chat. That's a way that you can meet other people, more followers, gain more, more discussion on Twitter, and people will follow you. Also revel relevant to what we're talking about, we archive, I showed you on Scribd, transcripts of all of the discussions. You can go through there. A lot of the CustServe chats have a lot to do with social commerce because customer service, we're coming around full circle again to the Avon lady, right? It's all about interacting. It's all about customer service and trust. So when you do this, consider that every person, every tweet, whether you get a response or not, know that somebody's watching it. And if you don't want to be, no, you may have some strong political beliefs. But bottom line, your customers may not have the same political beliefs. I make it a policy never to discuss politics online because my audience comes from all worlds, left, right, center, and I want to keep it that way. I want the broadest audience possible. So I recommend certain things. Think about what your mom talked about, things you didn't talk about in polite company, right? You don't want to talk about them online. You don't want to alienate a potential customer. Um, when you're talking on Twitter, think about who you're talking about, 
who you're talking to and what times they come on. I talked about that again. So what I do is I use something called Buffer App, B-U-F-F-E-R-A-P-P dot com. And they do also have a free service where you can schedule tweets. Um, first thing in the morning, I'm generally reading my email and such. And I will schedule news stories. Before I go to sleep at night, I sit with my tablet and I schedule news tweets. And people read them in the morning. Now, know that when you tweet a story on Twitter, don't just retweet it because you want to be connected to that person. Click on the link. Read the story. A, it may, even though you trust that person, you may not agree with it. But once you retweet it, it becomes part of your stream. It becomes tied to you. So never just blindly retweet something. I think that's very, very important. Um, also kind of disingenuous, right? Buffer will also work with um, an, an app that you can schedule your tweets called Tweriod. <laughs> T-W-E-R-I-O-D. I'm going to show you a sample screen from Tweriod where when my Twitter followers are on. I think that shows you, uh, kind of interestingly, this was at one point in time, but know that the internet changes, and as your followers change online, they're going to be on at different hours. So let me address, since we're coming close, um, about some of the questions we did get earlier. Um, does Pinterest actually benefit retailers? Well, I will tell you that there are some big businesses who are doing great business on Pinterest. But as a small business, how, how many social streams can you get involved in? You know, Pinterest may be good for you if you're in a very visual business where pictures have a lot to do with it, maybe travel, interior design, fashion. Pinterest is great for stuff like that. But you know, a lot the basic stuff, what I sell is books and photography equipment, things to get to take pictures for online photos, product photos. Yeah, that's not so interesting on tw Pinterest. So yes, I do have a board. I, I don't pay enough attention to it because honestly, it isn't something that sells very well for me. Um, how do you place a value on social media engagement? You can't expect the ROI, that's return on investment. And an investment can either be time or money, right? So the return on investment will come gradually. It builds. I mean, eBay didn't happen in a day. <laughs> Anybody who's built a brick and mortar store will tell you it didn't happen in a day. And with social, again, connecting with people, you have to build. So put up the store, put up that uh, free fa fan page toolkit, where they pay direct through PayPal, and then start your interactions. Have your website, your base of operations, and then the ROI will happen. It really does. People trust you. I know that my sales have increased, and of course, I can't pinpoint that this exactly came from Twitter or Facebook, although I will show you in another webcast um, some insights that I get from Omniture that show where the people come to my eBay store. And they do come from Facebook, strangely, because I have a store on Facebook. But bottom line, I don't care where they buy as long as they buy, right? So you can do that. So that is another way to do it. Let me see. Um, we've covered that. Um... Let me see. Which social networks are the best for promoting my products? Do I need to have a presence on all of them? Yeah, that's a little tough. I mean, when you think about it, which is the most important? If you're comfortable with texting, 
And studies have shown that it takes a special kind of person to be able to get their point across in 140 characters. I generally have to type out my tweets, and they're always too long, and then I have to edit them down. A little tip, leave about 16 characters, 15 characters at the end, so if somebody wants to retweet it, they don't have to worry about short, uh, retweet it and leave a comment. They don't have to worry about shortening or modifying your tweet. They've got enough room to add a little and retweet it with a comment. So, you know, consider doing that. Um, Facebook, everybody's on Facebook. You're going to reach every group of people on Facebook. Remember, again, if you want to go to other business stores on Facebook, I don't know if this came through the audio, is you have to be logged in as your personal persona on Facebook. You can't go and see apps on business pages if you're logged in as your business persona on Facebook. So know that if you want to go to the stores, you have to go as you, your personal account. And there's so many people on Facebook. And it's easy to meet people, easy to find people, but not quite as easy as Twitter. And Twitter is a bit more accepting of strangers because remember, Facebook refers to them as friends. And on Twitter, you just follow people. You follow people that are interesting. Um, let me see. Karen Locker said, I hate to edit someone's tweet. Yeah, I'm with you. I hate that too. And if you do edit someone's treat, tweet, change the RT to an MT. Means, uh, and I just forgot what it means. It modified tweet. <laughs> means that you've modified it. So, Try and figure out, with some of the tools I show you, what time your people are on. Build your audience online, which is very important. Um, let me see. This was an important uh, fact that I wanted to share with you. Um, primary influence on purchase decisions on the Internet by age. User-generated content, 51%. Information or recommendation from friends or family or colleagues, 41%, 49%. Um, I see someone, Kevin says, I'm, I'm, whoa, I make it a thing, let me say, to keep, I think, to keep a page down to a certain amount of uh, people so you can create a relationship. Is that hurting you? Um, keeping your personal friends is one thing, but I would recommend, Kevin, if you have a business page on, or if you don't have a business page on Facebook and you do have a business where you want to sell things, create a second page and you're going to find it harder to get people onto a business page or a fan page. Um, but that gives you a better opportunity to reach people, but Building just from 150 people is, is not easy. You want the largest amount of people to know you, to know what you're selling and know what you do. And you can cross post. If you have your personal page, you can always say, I just posted some really interesting stuff on my business page. Check it out. You can do that. Um, Twitter is an open platform, Kurt. You said that. Uh, Facebook has limits regarding reach. So when you're on Twitter, you're reaching the largest amount of people, which, let's face it, when you're selling on eBay, you reach the largest amount of people. I'm going to tell you a quick story. I see Kurt's name there, and we talked about videos. Um, Kurt had a bunch of Pico projectors. This is one of the stories I wrote in one of my books from him. And he had Pico projectors. These are little projectors that attach to your smartphone and you can project movies onto a wall. They're pretty amazing. He put together a little kit with speakers and a little tripod so that it was an all-in-one kit. But obviously that raised the price, so he did a video, put it on YouTube. 
Well, he sold all 12 of the items that he had for sale. But that video is still on YouTube. And in six months, it had over 60,000 views. Who knew? Right, 60,000 views. And what does that tell you? Is that Kurt should have bought a heck of a lot more to sell, but he didn't know that it was going to have that bombastic effect. And that's the only way I can describe it. I mean, John Colder Ice Lawson, who does our other chats, when he first started out, he had a buttload of uh, bandanas, you know, the things some people tie on their heads. The bottom line is they weren't selling. Why? Because people do not know how to tie a bandana. So he did a video, and if you find it on uh, YouTube, it's kind of funny. He's standing there without any shoes on. And he's demonstrating on little wig heads how to fold bandanas. Do you know he still continually sells uh, t over ten th tens, of, let's just say lots of thousands of dollars in bandana sales? That video draws in. So again, use the Involver app, bring the video. You can find all this information on my fan page. And you can draw things to have people buy from you. Let me think. Anything else? Any other questions? Anybody? How do I make my products more discoverable on eBay and Etsy? Okay, that's the last question I have. Um, you can tweet them. You can, again, if they're visual, put them on Pinterest. But know that when you set up an app that's going to tweet your eBay listings or your Etsy listings, and you have no other interaction, the only people that are going to follow you are robots. And robots are advertising methods that want to build followings, and they're of no value. Know that when you're measured on clout or cred.com, they look at your followers. They see if your followers are engaging. The people I follow are very valuable. Everybody, I, I know it's almost 60,000 people, they all have something interesting to say. And you can segment your groups on TweetDeck by putting different columns, let's say customers, close friends and family, uh, my CustServe buddies, my tech radio buddies, and you can have different com columns so you can see these different groups of people and what they have to say. And this will help you organize your Twitter outreach. Learn to use the columns in TweetDeck. So I think that's about it. If there are no more questions from anybody, I think we've got it all. So as a last minute wrap up, put up that Facebook store. Uh, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash fan page toolkit. Um, get apps for your Facebook page at Involver, I-N-V-O-L-V-E-R dot com. By the way, these, this is sponsored by Dymo and Disha, and they are my buddies, and they allow me to talk to you and tell you who the very cool people are. <laughs> um, the Facebook sizing is from Lunametrics, L-U-N-A, M-E-T-R-I-C-S. Um, Kakoa, how is that different from Twitter's list feature? Um, okay, in TweetDeck, you can make columns under any keyword, and you don't have to have a list. And it will catch tweets as they come. Also, if you're using Twitter lists, which is great, okay, but I just find... I change too often of things that I want to have. I have private Twitter lists of customers and friends and different people. But sharing of Twitter lists is important. But if you're talking about your customers and people you do business with, you know, Macy's doesn't tell Gimbal, <laughs> right? This is something you want to keep to yourself. So that would be a private list on Twitter versus a public list, right? So it doesn't hurt. You can do it as a Twitter list, but keep them private. Share only the lists. Like I have a great list of brands on Twitter. Oh, I forgot to tell you about one thing. There's a website called RetailTweets.com. R-E-T-A-I-L-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. If you go there, this guy curates current tweets 
from major retailers and ma major brick and mortar retailers and major online retailers. If you take a look, you can study and see. It updates automatically and see what they are tweeting about. This is really important to get to know just how the big guys do it. And whether they're successful or not is another story. I mean, you'll look at some of those tweet streams and wonder exactly what they think they're doing because there's no social engagement. So it's a good learning lesson. Take a look, retailtweets.com. Any other questions? Yeah, come by. Um, okay, TweetDeck helps you to post simultaneously to multiple Facebook and Twitter accounts. Be careful posting back and forth. Um, between Facebook and Twitter. Remember they are different audiences. Facebook wants more personal. And I have found that uh, linking the news stories, unless it's a really good story that I might find people loving on Twitter, is not going to do so well on Facebook. So be a little careful on what you share between Facebook and Twitter because they're different audiences. Remember, Facebook is more personal. Twitter is more conversational. It's texting back and forth with your friends. So thank you so much for coming. Um, everybody who joined the discussion, I've loved reading what you had to say. Um, thank you, Dymo Indicia. Just so you know, and they didn't tell me to say this, Dymo Indicia invented internet postage. Harry Whitehouse, the CEO of Dymo Indicia, and that was before it was Dymo, it was a little company, thought this was a great idea and he invented internet postage and the tools and the software that he started are running practically the entire web shipping today. So go Harry. <laughs> My next live chat is going to be on Tuesday, November 13th and I'm going to be discussing online versus offline marketing. That's kind of important because they tie in together very carefully. So if you have questions um, about how to determine where your marketing dollars should go, where you should be spending them right now, join me here in two weeks and I'll give you that information. Visit me on my Facebook page. You can re-watch this right here on this page. And I want to thank everybody. I'm waving to everybody. Thank you so much. And thanks for showing up and making me not feel alone. Have a great holiday selling season, and I'll see you on Facebook and Twitter. Bye.